also a constituency of the She is running the So, Even in the height of summer, right? It's only May. Yeah, I know. Right. Like, it's going to happen in July or August. worse. So that's, but, that's but I would just say, you're our representative yes. in the federal so government. We are so we just have the platform that yeah. we are never going to have. Right. And Rover, I mean, it's hard for us to even just get a piece to be with us. That's, that's I was saying, like, saying. Christy, I, you know, they've been trying, and I don't think Debbie was saying it never happened. Right? And they are her constituents that put her in office, right? We know she's busy. We I, know you're I take busy, lots of people.
taking a tiny step forward but 18 million steps back. Well, you know, it's all this, countering each other. So I agree there's some tensions, there's no doubt, right? Yeah. False food subsidies. But what I've said to many people in this group and many people I'll continue to say is that some of the fossil fuel subsidies that we deliver, that we continue to deliver, are for remote locations, including indigenous people in Canada's market, that have no other means of trying to be perhaps a diesel powered engine. Right? We need to get past that and get past that. And I might have had the discussion with the on how we do just that. And on the on the issue of sort of um, phasing out some of the subsidies, which has been nine actual fossil fuel subsidies that have been eliminated this year, there's more to come in the needs to be hydrogen, right. solar, and wind, um, because what I had, I had a discussion about nuclear about last fall, and people said, well, we want to hear the counter narrative, so there's somebody there from, he's an environmental lawyer, sort of affiliated with environmental defense, but not exactly, uh, but he was recommended to me as somebody to counter that narrative, solar and wind will be there, hydrogen will be there, because as you're seeing, I'm actually pleased to see there's finally some electric charging stations popping up in, in our riding, I think we need more of that, but people are asking me genuine questions about how do we sustain an electrification of buildings and cars based on the grid that we have now? Because something needs to energize that grid. That's right. right. That's right. So that's well, at the moment, there's going to be a bit that's supposed to potentially be a decision made about the nation's capital or the interest of the No, I know. Yeah. Your timing is good. Because yeah. I'll think that I will talk to Christy about you have been able to. So, it's, 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 it's sort of riding and it's sort of beat now, or what, what you just uh, trying to meet with Yeah, it's probably beat now, okay. now people have been trying to... They're ensuring yeah. that they have an audience with them, because that's important. Because I think on Christian's piece, one thing we're also thinking, trying to work on is ensuring that banks and pension funds yeah. that invest have sort of direction and guidelines about how their investments could be more targeted on sustainable energy projects, Absolutely. sustainable uh, Royal Bank, finance, etc. Royal Bank, one of the worst offenders. Yeah. They're just big, big investors in fossil fuels. And we don't have what's called like the sustainable financing taxonomy that they have in some parts of Europe. Right. So that's an easy solution to give them some guidance about this is what we would accept as a green initiative versus not. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'd like that to be guidance. Yeah. No, <laughs> like I'd like it to be a lot harder than guidance. I have a, here, here, here. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know who has this up first. I, ha I have something to add to that. Yeah. Um, I am. I'm totally in agreement with electrifying the society. But, um, for decades, since the 1960s, the government has been successfully destroying the railway system and cutting the farm on the private car. Now we need to. Well, cars aren't going to be uninvented, and they have some essential uses. We need to cut down discretionary use. People aren't driving their cars in the corner store or taking a vacation when they could be taking a train and perhaps running a car on the other end. Or building so, houses on a green belt so you'll have to commute. Right. right. And you got to take so the streets part We know. The yeah. railways can be electrified. It's been done for a hundred years in Europe, but not here because General Motors threatened to stop shipping car parts on electric roads. That's actually the reason. So we have all these fossil powered railways. Uh, and General Motors, but General Motors, by the way. So, um, but the railways can be electrified and run off the power grid. No uh, batteries or uh, you know, rare earth necessary to do this. So, the uh, government doesn't seem to be moving very fast on that. So, we have, well, there's a recent estimate that the Quebec City needs their high speed rail corridor and ele electrified. Oh yeah, that's been talked about for decades, and I'll believe it when I see it. I don't know if I'll see it in my lifetime because it's come, many proposals have come forward and they never stick. Well, I think I mean obviously electrification is taking rapidly right now. I mean, I was at the auto show and there was about two cars of ours on offer. That right, were, but, but that this were, is cars. So again, we're back to using the rare earth chemicals, and uh, yeah. it's unsustainable. And well, they do have their uses. I'm not saying they shouldn't exist. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
I can send you some information about what we're doing for oh, the high school cool. railways this way. And, and well, that would be very interesting because, like I said, I read the papers, I look at the news and television, and I'm relatively aware of what's going on, but I've seen this before. Probably since at least the 1970s, these things have been quoted, and they never stick. Well, yeah, but I'm just pointing out that I've seen this uh, book before. But if you want to give like your email to Tannis, Tannis can take your email My daughter is one of the top climate scientists in the world. Okay. Harvard PhD, is a full professor, 29 years old, and he's a chair at Excellent. Yale University. Excellent. It's Excellent. around the world, Excellent. from Washington this week to uh, Ottawa. She said that this, what you're seeing around the world, the pain caused by climate, is the tip of the iceberg. And what's about to happen, I want to talk about. All this stuff that's happening on the East Coast of West, the fire she told me three years ago, exactly. The Greenland's melting, the ocean temperatures are coming up. If the top layer, the lower layers of the, of the, the currents in the Atlantic, ever stop flowing, all the fish we're eating are going to be gone. There's going to be mass starvation here in Canada from the oceans. And the, the, the climate changes from the, 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 the water's warming in the Atlantic region and in Canada is what's causing a lot of the surge and destruction on the shores out there, but it's not just there. And she said that side is going to go all the way to Manitoba. Yeah, we've been lucky here so far. So this is the tip of the iceberg. Toronto's not immune. What's going to happen? These people I see here are worried. And they should be, because, you know, without my daughter alarming, that's what she told me, it means that we could get, we've been fairly lucky so far in Toronto, but it's coming, and must be complacent, thinking, oh well, you know, yeah, Alberta's on fire, yeah, ticked off, we don't worry about that, you know, everyone's there too, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're right, and, and, uh, and I grew up in D.C., I go, went back to my relatives and people, every, every, anything on this side of the mountains when I was a kid growing up before I went to go to These were awful people that caused all the problems that you see. I finally told my family, I'm sick of hearing about this, you know. And then you go to another side of the mountains to Alberta and then it's another problem. And, and it, it, this is Canada as we know it. But it, we can change that too. If, 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 if attitudes change. And there is this time tip of the iceberg to be concerned about. While we're talking about the details, you have to keep your time. Well, I think that was interesting was the increase in the amount of pain students that are so much. And the amount of pain students that are so much. So people constantly think about the vehicles on the road or the trains we're using, etc. But actually, heating, cooling, building, and building, 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 Companies still want their people in there so they can watch them, right? Like, <laughs> but it's about sort of green infrastructure, green zone, yes, home renovation, etc. Yeah. Like the, um, the heat pumps. Right? Yep. Heat so pumps, I hope you guys absolutely. all know there's lots of incentives for installing heat pumps. Oh, in totally. Right yeah. Yeah. Our next one is that's know. what it's going to be. I was going to mention that, yeah. but they need to be heavily incentivized, and I'm currently not aware of it. Okay, so we, you there, definitely need to give Candace your email. Yeah, there's a so group. So, can you bring us to my card? Um, and um, we'll get you some information about it. Not just, not just yeah. 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 on television, on the radio, on the internet. Yeah. On the internet. Yeah. Because yeah. a fellow in the riding who's out actually helping people in Rod's experience. Yeah. yeah. And there's also, there's a retrofit forum that's providing a lot of information, and also a group buying, right, so that you can get things to but it also needs to be done in institutional buildings. Like at the yes. moment, I'm living above the storefront, right. and the landlord needs to be incentivized too, yeah. because I don't know the properties. So, yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you want to give your email for this? Yeah,
consider maybe taxing the viewers. That would hit the consumption. Well, but I'll tell you right now, I mean, that's what the carbon price does, right? right. I mean, every right. time it goes up on April 1st, we exactly. hear about it on the floor that it's common. Exactly. So that's like we're some sort of devil <laughs> <that's laughs> in another planet. More. And Pierre Paul is campaigning right now that he's going to repeal it. Right. That would be a calamitous step back. Yes, yes. Right. Right. It's right. It's I think what Doug Ford's doing with the Green Belt is And make it easier. Getting rid of the carbon price would be absolutely disgusting. Make it easier for people who put in a small tennis on the I did it a year ago. Make it less complicated, less difficult, the next challenge to get the five thousand dollars we bank. So you got it, but it just took no, too I long didn't to get, get it. it. Yet. <laughs> okay, you've applied yeah, for it. Uh, I applied uh, six months ago, in fact more than that, but then uh, they were slow, then when we finally got to talk to somebody, they say that my my GKC uh, had expired, so I but I cannot get a new one because I have to change my email to get a new one. I'm going on vacation next month. I, 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 I'd like I, to get that. When I come back, I'll get a new name, I'll get a new ticket, and then I will make sure I can get my $5,000, which we approved in principle a year ago. So something that is just... Yeah, but if I, if I, in case I, I'm not successful, I will come to us. Absolutely. That's for the bureaucracy. I'm glad you installed it, because it's going to be a huge dividend. Yeah, that's right. It's a disposable start of cost. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, I, I'm assuming here that we're talking about capping the emissions of the oil and gas industry. Is that yes. right? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, is there any medium to long-term thinking about capping production of uh, oil and gas? So, I'm going to be straight with you, right? Because I'm not going to, uh, you don't deserve any sort of my, my waffling. Um, there is, but not right now, right? So what we campaigned on was about the emissions and coming out of it. That begs the question, well, if there's still production of oil and gas happening, then how are we ensuring, uh, how, are we, how are we ensuring that we're not actually moving more and polluting less? And that relates to all sorts of things that relate to sort of the greening of that sector, but also relates to carbon capturing and like storage. Some people think it makes sense, some people think that's fantastic and shouldn't even be explored. But I also see that we have, we're sort of in a geopolitical jam right now where We've got a very bad war in Russia that's affecting Ukraine, including my constituents, where you see what it's like around Canada. And we've got European allies in Germany, France, England, we've got Poles, Romanians, all coming to us, very desperate for basic energy. And that needs to be somehow in the short term. The long term is things like that hydrogen deal that the Germans signed. That's useful. I don't think it's going to uh, provide a ton of uh, support for the electricity grid in Germany. But I'm also quite despondent when I see what Germany is doing right now, the jam that they're in, that they're now burning coal again. Yeah. Like that's almost the end of the right? Yeah. That's the last place we need to be. One of the great things that, you know, what we achieved in this province under Kathleen Wynne and Dalton Kitt was shutting down the coal fire plants. That was apparently the single biggest THC reduction in the history of the United States. We're still burning coal now, we're still burning it, but, et cetera. So, the immediate answer is that that's not part of the issue. The initiative is capping the emissions that are coming out of it yet. It's not stopping the cut. But I appreciate that's where people like to get. I mean, that's why I'm going to get. Part of the capping the emissions is like real penalties for not doing it, right? Not just a little fine that's like a slap on the wrist, but like serious, significant disincentives to go over. Yeah. 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 That's something that's yeah. very yeah. Yeah. I've got uh, okay, yeah, how are you? <laughs> My dilemma is that there's so much of our life that's made with petroleum. So the cap on emissions, I'm hoping, is strong enough so that it encourages the innovators because I know they can find a way to get it out of the ground and process it in clever ways, you know, like necessity is the mother of invention. I've got contact lenses in. This is petroleum. I mean, your watches, our shoes, our tires. So there's so many things that we rely on right now. So I, I just think, like, give them a big wall and they'll find a way to, you know, find a new way. So that's what I like. Anyway. No, but that's good to see you too. Yeah, for sure. Well, I want to... some tea or something? Well, I want to urge the, uh, the emergency that we have here. I have a nine-year-old son. I know you have kids too. There's no time to lose. I mean, you say, oh, we're having a... Uh, the production at some point in the future, but that's not enough because we're really close to the cooking pot. So I, I really, I, every day I think anxiously of the future of my son, who 
who's going to be adult in a world that's totally different than ours, how is he going to be managed? He's going to go on like pretending that nothing's going on. So I really, really urge you to take bold and immediate action, not something that's going to, until the 2050 we're doing something. No, that's not enough. That's absolutely not. You have to think about our future. Thank you for being in here. I appreciate it. I appreciate your feedback. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys in the front of the camera all later today. The team has come out with a very strong head. I'll let you know when I have my time. Thank you guys. Take care. Thank you. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Stay healthy. Are you, are you